the course completion certificates and then you can include in the course book information. Under extracurricular activities, you can include activities from so called sports and uh, technology activities. How to frame each of them again, we can talk about in the uh, you know, profile specific section. Let's move to the next slide. Right, so this is some general tips on your CV. So whenever someone starts reading your CV, they will read it from the top and for each of the lines, they will read from the left first. So make sure that uh, you know you are including the most important things on top and left. An average amount of time uh, some recruiter would give to your CV would be 30 to 45 seconds. So it's important that they, you know, you make sure that they read the most important parts. Uh, start all sentences with action verbs. Uh, you can get a list of action verbs on MIT and Stanford websites. Uh, you can look at that. And so most of the times you have to include your impact more than the process because the process of doing something, you know, may not be understandable to every recruiter of how you did it. But what was the impact? So let's say I, you know, wrote 10,000 lines of code. And that's that's one bit, but that code must have done something, right? It may have, you know, ex improved the user experience by some percentage points or, you know, in enhanced the acquisition funnel or something like that. So try to quantify what was the impact of the work done. Sometimes the process of how you did it may be important in some profiles and sometimes it may not be important. Then again, the sentence structure of each sentence on your CV should be, you know, uh, how you did something followed by, you know, what what you did. So, for example, uh, I could say that I wrote in 10,000 lines of Python code to improve user experience by 10% or I could frame it as I improved user experience by 10% by writing 10,000 lines of Python code. So the second one in this case would be the more appropriate way of do, uh, of writing because the is something that is more generic comes to the left so that uh, all recruiters can understand. So uh, the left alignment is automatic in your ERP portal, but for right align, try to right align your CV to the extent possible, which means that try to end all your sentences at uh, you know almost similar alignment. A good way to do that would be try to fill the complete line because if the complete line is filled, then your CV automatically gets right aligned. It's just structured and organized to look at, and there's a higher chance that recruiters might spend more time on it if it's aesthetically you know aesthetically pleasing. Uh, needless to say, but try to maintain uniformity in your headings, font style, font structures and, and everything. Try not to include more than two fonts in your CV. Uh, again, just for the you know aesthetics and organization purposes. And uh, often we try to you know force pull things inside our CV just for the aesthetics of it, but don't try to do that because recruiters will look at you know what is bold and if they don't find it very impactful then they might get into the impression that you know you you consider such a small thing to be very impactful that's why you bolded it so you don't want to give out that kind of an impression so make sure of this. let's move to the next slide so this is specific to your uh, cv building in the erp you guys are already aware that you have a cv building module in your erp and there so in your CDC tab, go to you know application for placement and internship. There you will find your um, CV building portal. You can build a maximum of three CVs. So um, how it works is that you have to fill in all the information in a single form along with all the proofs. And then you have an option to select which categories of things can appear in which CV. Um, so bullets are not already inbuilt. You cannot, uh, you know, you, you cannot apply the bullets as such. You have to press Alt plus 049 for bullets. You may also copy paste bullets from Word. That is also OK. You can copy and it will get pasted. And formatting is very critical uh, because the CV building portal supports thousands of students. Sometimes it is possible that you may face formatting issues. Uh, my recommendation is be very patient with the portal. And once you click on the update button on the left top of your CV portal, make sure that you are waiting until and unless the page reloads itself. Do not click on the update button twice. Never ever click on the update button twice because then you're running the risk of messing up your whole uh, formatting in one shot. So it, sometimes uh, uh, we have seen in CDC that there are cases where uh, bullets get removed and spaces uh, interchange themselves or 
you know sentences interchanging cell some words are missing things like that happen when things like that happen when you click on the update button twice so never ever do that uh, another tip about bold letters is that if your generic font size is 9 then your bold font size must be 8 to be able to match it. So when you bold anything on your uh, CV, then automatically the size, the font size, it will show you a font size of 9, but it will actually be a font size of 10. So if you're building your CV in 9, then bold things should be 8 so that there's a proper match between the two. And of course, try to uh, include proofs of everything that you write on your CV. You may be called for checking. Companies may will also verify your CVs during the process or after the process. So make sure you have all proofs in place. Let's move to the next slide. Right, so uh, these are a list of mistakes that CDC has seen so far. So never ever wait for the last day to complete your series. There is a lot of load on the server on the last day and it's possible that a lot of changes that you do may not get saved or Again, there may be spacing alignment and bullets issues at the end. So make sure that at least a couple of days before the CV making deadline, you are all set with all three of your CVs. Always create a content of your uh, whatever you're writing on your CV as a backup on, on a Google Doc or Word somewhere so that in case there is some mishap with your CV in the process, you can quickly recreate it. And uh, often it's possible that you may make your CV and relax ki haan ho gaya hai. and then you may realize later on that there are small changes that you need to do on the last day and on the last day again you might mess up uh, on your portal. So make sure that before you finalize your CV you have done complete proofreading given it to seniors and you are reasonably confident that you will not need to make any other edits on your CV. Uh, again, do not add things that you are not confident about. Um, in a lot of interviews, you will be asked about pro your projects in very, very you know, huge amount of detail. In some cases, you may be asked to present parts of your projects if you have them. So make sure, and this goes for everything, right? You, including PORs, they may ask you in detail about your PORs also. So make sure that you're very confident about what you're putting in on your CV and also make sure that all your proofs are legit and uh, you know do not try to include anything without proofs otherwise you are attracting the risk of disciplinary action by CDC. Let's move to the next slide. All right, so now we are moving to the profile wise tips section. Uh, I will talk about the consulting profile here. So this is specific to the consulting profile. Keep your CV to strictly one page. In certain other profiles, you can afford to have a two pager CV or a 1.5 pager CV, but consulting CVs are usually only one page. And here the order of subheadings is very crucial. So most of the KGP CVs you will see uh, are in a particular order, but in a consulting CV, let's say you are very good at sports and you want to include it right at the top, then that's always an option, but make sure that you know, whatever is your strongest bit about yourself that remains on the top, even if it's not, you know, it doesn't fall in line with the orthodox way of uh, how KGP CVs are created. Um, although aesthetic and grammatical issues are important everywhere, in, especially in consulting CVs, they are very, very, very important because very high attention to detail is required when you are on the consulting job. So make sure that there are no grammatical errors, spacing errors, alignment errors, aesthetically everything should look fine, which means that font size, size, spacing, punctuation marks, everything should be in place. So uh, consultants, they don't usually understand, you know, very core engineering aspects of or technical aspects of the work that you've done. Let's say, for example, you are writing, I use some module in Alteryx. They might not even know what Alteryx means. So try to use maximum amount of space on your CV to include generic sentences, which everyone can understand. And uh, so don't make it, you know, don't use jargon specific to the industry and which the they might not understand because if you have done quality work, then they need to know that you have done quality work. So uh, try to you know, be as uh, on point and layman and quantifiable as possible mm, because you may have put in lots of hours, but at the end of the day, what they're interested to know is what kind of impact were you able to create during your PORs or projects or internships, right? And uh, as already mentioned, start all sentences with an action verb. You can check MIT Career Services for, the, for help and you can also check Stanford Career Services. They have a good list of action verbs and uh, 
few consulting firms will ask for a cover letter along with your CV. It's always a good idea to submit a cover letter because if your CV is you know, not, they are not very confident uh, from your CV that you're right fit for their shortlist, then they will go through the cover letter to understand more about yourself. Bold, so it's not a rule of thumb, but um, it's you can consider this to be a maximum limit that there should not be more than one or two bolds in a sentence. Otherwise, your whole sentence looks bolded and doesn't look aesthetically pleasing and that's the, it loses the whole point because then the uh, recruiter has to focus on your whole sentence right? and one or two underlines you can do in your CV for like must 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 read information that you think that it's, it's kind of make or break information then do an underline right? let's move to the next slide uh Dev, I'm sorry to interrupt uh, some people are not able to see the screen so I might reshare it once maybe there is some problem from my sure, sure. yeah yeah do that Just let me know when we're ready. Uh, the screen is visible, right? To me it is. Okay. So folks can put it on the chat if they can't see. Ah, uh, yes. Lots uh, it's of visible to everyone. Yeah. Right. So now let's talk about the internship and project section of your consult CV. Uh, in the consult CV for corporate intern internships, brand companies matter a lot. Uh, so usually recruiters may not have the time to go through each and every line of all the work that you have done, but having a good brand on your CV will prove to be impactful when they're getting a shortlist. So make sure that you are keeping your brand internships right at the top and try to do brand internships in the first place if possible. Uh, there should be a structure attached to your so consulting is all about structure if for enthusiasts you you may have heard about it so make sure that you're following the same structure inside all your internships and projects so an example of that could be that the first line talks about the like the overall goal that you have achieved or overall impact of the project next you can give a brief about the description and three and four you can give like small impacts of uh, what you have done in your project or maybe you have done two mini projects inside that project. So you can talk about what was the value added in the, those two projects, but then make sure that you follow the same structure everywhere. It should look structured and after reading one internship or project description, the interview should be able to understand, you know, how the other one or two projects will look like. Uh, entrepreneurial experiences in general, you will see KDP seniors giving you tips that do not include them in your CV, but for consult CVs, they're actually pretty helpful. Um, because consult requires a lot of business acumen. That's what they are judging also through your CVs. So having an entrepreneurial experience is probably the best way to display that you have good business acumen. Even if you know you had a loss making experience or didn't turn out to be as good as you expected, it is still good to have in your CV. International experiences are highly valued. So try to highlight them and try to include them if you have them. Let's move to the next slide. So some final thoughts, um, whatever you include on your CV, be prepared for guesstimates around the same. So your department, you can have a guesstimate around that. If you have any extracurricular interests, you can have a guesstimate around that. So that this is very much possible. I've given you an example. So if you say you're in the inter all cricket team or inter IT cricket team, you may be asked to guesstimate earnings of an IPL team or how many audience would sit in the oval or things like that. So be ready for guesstimates. So when you're making your CV, you want to keep that in mind. Right? You don't want to artificially put in content which will which will attract very hard guesstimates your end. So make sure of that. And about industries that you have interned in or extracurricular activities, whatever you're mentioning on your CV, if it's related to any of the industries, then make sure that you have in and out research of that industry because you may be given profitability cases or other types of cases from that industry and they would expect you to know like what are the major costs in the industry what does the competitive landscape in india and the world look like what are the factors major factors that the profit of this industry depends upon so you are asked to display business acumen as such so make sure that you are doing that 
other general tips for consult is that uh, a lot of people do consult cases on their own from case books and then try to check which is not a very efficient method of doing things so make sure that you're doing them with a partner uh, mental maths and english is very important mental maths is almost like a make or break in consult so at least one or two rounds consult interviews usually you'll have three to four rounds in some cases up to six rounds and you will be asked to do mental maths in at least one or two rounds so there is a good uh, math tool called the victor chains math tool you that which is specifically tailored towards consult you can look at that and hr and fit questions are very important for most of the consult companies that are hiring in terms and full times so be very serious about them and prepare for them well in advance don't leave them for the last one i think that's everything about consult chavi let's move to the next one uh so continuing with the long monologue i will also talk about the finance profile uh, this is important tips for your cv and the processes uh, so most firms will have a test followed by a cv shortlist there are some firms like uh, nomura i think they do not have a test uh, deutsche bank will have a test but that's a personality test so largely for the nomura and deutsche bank your shortlisting criteria is mainly the cv for other firms like jp morgan morgan stanley anz credit suisse they'll mostly all of them will have a like some kind of a initial test shortlist followed by a test so again the cv shortlisting process is very similar to consulting so all rules that apply to consulting will also apply to finance uh, the only twist here is that you have to show some inclination towards finance in your cv if possible or analytics so you know be well aware that finance firms are not just hiring for core finance roles from kgp they may you know say that you are a investment banking analyst or something like that but they they do have desks where heavy analytics is taking place post trade analytics and all so heavy use of python r and things like that is also taking place so e even if you don't have a lot of knowledge about finance but you're good with data science you you might still make it so don't be discouraged if if you don't have a lot of finance experience but yes for those who still have the time having a cfa frm certification or an nsim certification is helpful cfa frm in general would be more helpful than uh, nsim certification and of course do maths and puzzles very well um, banks like goldman sachs hire for quant roles and in their quant shortlist they do ask a lot of maths and puzzle questions so a lot of times students get discouraged when they see environment on the campus ki people have a lot of finance backgrounds and internships and cfas and frms but often a lot of people who end up making it to investment banks are not cfa frms or nsims and don't have a lot of finance internships so don't be discouraged let's move to the next slide right so here again if you have a finance angle to your project make sure that you are highlighting the same so you may have worked as a like a project management intern in grow or small case or fintech companies try to you know highlight the finance aspects of it there uh, you know whatever finance you learned make sure one or two lines is related to that and again if you don't have finance then highlight analytics aspect especially python r sql very important for finance roles and if you are confident about finance terms let's say you did a like a dcf valuation somewhere then make sure you bold it because these terms catch attentions of the recruiters and they are more likely to shortlist you all the finance firms as a rule of thumb will have at least one round which is based on cva grilling and the cva grilling is going to be intense so make sure you are very 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 thorough with every line that is written on your cv they will ask you for you know where did you get the data how did the data look like what analysis did you do how did you reach that conclusion why did you not do some other type of analysis so make sure you have done a lot of mocks about everything that is written on your cv and a lot of us uh, have our own equity portfolios or we are following you know big equity analyst popular equity analysts on twitter and all so if you are doing that then under extra curricular activities do mention that you are doing that it will fetch you some round Let's move to the next slide. So this is a list of important skills and courses that, uh, if you know, are good for finance. So don't just copy paste this list into your CV because if you mention anything out of these, you will be grilled thoroughly on that. 
so for me in deutsche bank i had a full round 40 minutes on complete on python python syntax my project and how i used python there and i had just mentioned one word on it so and a lot of my friends had similar experiences so make sure that whatever you it's best to not mention something if you don't know it but ideally this is the for those who still have time this is the kind of courses or or in whatever time you guys still have if you can complete or learn or if you are midway between any of these things then try to complete them this is good to have and for general tips about your interviews is that they would even if you are not a like a finance guy from from past then they would still expect you to know world news business news finance news and how each of the news is affecting different asset classes at least one asset class so in the interview they may ask you you know which asset class you are confident about and they may have an interview around the same equities is usually what most people say in kgp so you can prepare that although that is not a great idea because most of the equity desks in investment banks are automated to a large extent so most investment banks don't have huge equity trading desks what would be good is that if you can you know learn something about fixed income markets and how news affects them that would be great because in an investment bank fixed income or currencies both of them equally likely to have a very big desk for the two and good to have a stock pitch ready so by stock pitch you can have a like an actual equity stock or a currency pair or some kind of fixed income instrument or bond or something which you are confident about so have a pitch ready for it you know talk about why you think that it's a buy hold or sell recommendation and uh, have quantitative and qualitative analysis ready for the same that would be like a huge 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 plus in the interviews so you can yourself drive the interview to a place where you can present it again maths is going to be an important parts of interviews guesstimates most probably or some other kind of quick maths questions make sure you are not making any errors i've given a list of few sources that in your free time you can go through them just if you don't have a knack or an intuition for finance you can go through them to develop that intuition so there are standard sources of puzzles that you will be asked in tests and in interviews so make sure you learn the puzzles by heart because there are only four or five sources right the gurmeet's blog and uh, heard on the street chapter 1 and geeks for geeks and 50 challenging problems and brain seller i think these are the four or five sources so just go through all these sources learn all the puzzles and you should be set for finance so this would be all from my side thanks and i will pass it on to the next presenter Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, so I will cover the software part. So uh, Divya has basically covered the basic stuff. So uh, specifically to the software profile, I'll just add on to whatever points would be relevant. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so yeah. So the general structure of the resume would look the same. Uh, there are points in which uh, you must lay extra emphasis. Uh, particularly, PORs are not mandatory here. Even if you have space and need to write them, just mention the position, and you don't need to go on to greater depths to describe them. Similar is for extracurriculars. Uh, apart from that, uh, education qualifications, academic achievements would be in standard format. What matters more would be. Uh, any competitions and conferences, uh, similarly any research papers, internships, skills, and also the coursework information. So with uh, uh, regard to these all, we'll cover them in the next slide. So uh, these are the uh, some points that you can uh, lay greater stress on. The next slide, please. Uh, so with internships and projects, uh, include experiences that are both recent and relevant. So uh, let's say we will be covering analytical analytical profile next. So if you have, so for both software and analytics, if you have let's say one or two internships and not more than that, so you can include the same in both of them. Uh, to top it off, for specifically to both software and analytics, you can add some uh, personal projects. And how is the general format of adding an internship or a personal project? Is you need to show the impact and the value added. Uh, so uh, the technology is leveraged so what uh, so when you try and add the points in your cv take it as 
uh, go on the other side and look what potential questions that the person can ask. One possible thing is that let's say you have, you say that I have used uh, this technology to do clustering, which is something a popular approach in ML. So they will they will ask what are the alternate approaches that you had used, and what was the what were the results that you are getting with that. So and uh, why did you pursue this particular technology, and what is the impact and the value added with the same? So for both uh, these internships and projects, you'll need to attach proofs in the relevant formats. For self projects, you can uh, uh, because sometimes the entire video or whatever you have is not uploaded. So just have a simple PDF, upload whatever GitHub links you have linked to the videos. Just simply add it at uh, it to that PDF. Uh, similar uh, grilling would happen in the self projects as well. So be very sure that the internships and projects that you are adding, you have done on your own, and uh, you need to give some deeper insights that you got while doing that project and whatever your specific contributions in the same. Next slide. Uh, skills. So uh, both for skills and coursework, you can follow the similar pointers that are listed below. So. Uh, uh, you you will obviously be listing a lot number of programming languages and technologies in your skill section. Try to add the proficiency level. Let's say if you're proficient in it or familiar or a beginner in it, so that uh, if at all some uh, if you've written three programming languages and you're very confident in one, so that gives a sense to the interviewer so that uh, the questioning will be in the line that you expect. Uh, do not simply list all the languages and frameworks. Because uh, if the interviewer is having specific knowledge in one domain only, then your entire interview could be around one particular framework that you have written. Uh, so basically, a resume in soft, both software and analytics uh, is not, uh, I would say, holds a significant value in the interviews mainly. So uh, we have, so be very thorough with whatever you add. Uh, specifically for the software profile, your CGPA department uh, and your test score would be relevant for your test shortlist. In the interview section, only your resume would be helpful. Yeah, next slide. So uh, what are the final thoughts? Uh, so as you all know, that CP is an important part for your software profile. So you could add your code chef or code forces rankings in the same. So uh, in this, you don't need to worry if you, let's say, are not there on these particular platform. Whatever platforms you are on, you uh, just make, uh, you just need to make the interviewer understand the, uh, uh, let's say, the ranking or the relative uh, ranking that you've gained. Let's say you just simply write that you are uh, X ranker in coach. So that will not matter. You need to write which particular competition you had participated in. What are the total number of participants uh, in that, be it in numerical form or in percentages form? So that you can add. And uh, in the resume, uh, 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 for the software profile, focus more. At least some part has to be added on your proficiency level in competitive pro programming, simply because there'll be firms that do not have that amount of time to uh, have a live coding round. So apart from your resume, they will be specifically looking this part to judge your coding skills and which holds a very significant value. So make sure that you're adding this part, particularly for the software profile. Uh, yeah, next slide. Yeah, so uh, coming to the analytical analytics profile. So most of what we had discussed in the software profile would hold to here as well. Uh, most of the analytics profile have a have a coding round and their test pattern and their interview pattern is uh, to some extent similar. So yeah, next slide, please. Uh, so as we discussed, so uh, here also these POs and extracurriculars would hold less weightage. Ideally, you could add uh, POs in greater depth in analytics as compared to software because some analytical companies have a standard HR round where these POs can come handy. Even in some of the interviewer rounds, even in some technical rounds, some uh, part in the end is dedicated to that. So a little more of focus to extracurricular or POs could be laid here. Uh, in analytics, as compared to software, 
your skills and your internships would be the part which would have most relevance and most of your discussion would be around the same so be uh, so you can assume that 80 to 90% of the discussion would be on the skills and projects and internship part uh, and uh, yeah so there, then there are other parts which i think have been covered in the initial part on how to get the formatting and everything yeah so next slide yeah internship uh, and projects so most of you for the analytics profile would be adding some sort of projects related to ml or deep learning or these all so first would be let's say whatever if you've done internship in a particular domain and if you want to add some self projects make sure that uh, it is not in the same domain as your internship let's say you have implemented some ml technologies in your internship try that if you have to do a self project do some project uh, related to basic implementation of deep learning so as to complement things uh, uh, so in this you need to clearly mention the objective of the project so you need to follow this format because uh, if you do not follow this particular format the line of questioning would be in this particular format and then you would have a little trouble in uh, clearing things out. So clearly mention of the objective of the project uh, that you started with initially. Highlight the models used. Uh, uh, ideally, if you've used multiple models to do the same task, do not mention all. Mention the model that you got the best results with or corresponding to which you are quoting the results. And uh, it is always better to quote multiple models, but that uh, but the, those multiple models must correspond to uh, let's say different output output tasks let's say if you have if you're mentioning three models one should be for data pre-processing one uh, should be uh, to get the clustering and let's say one or two to get the results and improving upon them uh, quantify the impact of the project let's say if you are uh, improving efficiency then by what percentage or by what value you are improving that also what matrix you are using because you just can't say that you get 7% improvement on uh, on x mid on in x you need to uh, measure what matrix you are using and uh, you could also go on like what is your uh, specific contribution like what is the current method that is doing let's say the current method is achieving 4% and i am achieving 7% to get, give some context because then again these numbers uh, how to interpret these numbers so you need to also uh, specify that. Uh, also, if you if during the course of your internship you are you feel you are not very confident about the results, uh, you don't need to worry. You can just add whatever result that you have. Uh, the major part of your interview would be around the approach and the alternate approaches uh, considered, so that they have a clear understanding that you went into deep into that project and considered all possible cases, all possible let's say solution that were relevant and uh, you were able to find the best possible solution out of all that exists so that is the goal of the interviewer and his goal is not to judge you on what results that uh, you have uh, mm, yeah and yeah so have these reports and the repos handy because if it is not in your even if it's not in your cv and Sometimes uh, there is a deeper discussion, then he can just ask you okay, uh, if you have these reports or a repo handy and if you can quickly go over it. So uh, have whatever final reports you have from your internship, whatever GitHub links that you've created. So ideally have a GitHub link and push all of these things, whatever your internships and self projects into it. So it's easier for you to revise and easier for you to use as well, right? Yeah, next slide. Similarly, I think I've covered self project. So there are some sources on it. You can get some standard uh, projects that have been done and their results. Uh, in, in the self project, just uh, some random uh, projects on like with just some data pre-processing and feature selection would not work. Try to uh, find some projects which are company related so that you are not just able to explain your uh, results, but also the relevance with regards to the business side. Uh, because most of the interviews would be in the corporate domain and I think balancing the domains uh, I've already covered and do not exaggerate in any case so uh, because these are technical jargon so it's very easy uh, for someone to find out that the results that you are getting are incorrect or 
the model that you say that you implement, you are not implementing as it is. So it's very easy and intuitive to find out if that is happening or not. So just add whatever you have done and uh, you, you will be good to. Next slide. Yeah, so this is it for this profile. Just some uh, final thought would be uh, for the analytics profile. Uh, so analytics, so if some students are still confused, so for the analytical profiles, the test would have some sort of also quant and prop stats and everything. So cover that. And uh, in the analytical profile, uh, lot uh, more focus is laid to your resume. So if you are preparing separate resumes for software and analytics, focus on preparing resume for the analytical profile. On software mainly, it will be mostly around your skills and course also. You will be good to go with that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hi everyone, Nachigeta this side. So I'll give a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Nachigeta and I'm currently the product analyst at Sprinkler and I've completed my bachelor's and master's in civil engineering. So yeah, let's go ahead to the next slide. Okay, so first of all, product can be categorized as the subset of consulting. So basically what you will be divulging into while approaching this profile is business cases. So the better command you have on solving those cases is will be directly reflected while you are approaching this profile. So if you are targeting product by default, that means that you have to target consults as well. Because thinking about how a case can be cracked cannot be taught and that procedure is what you will be judged upon during your interview. Secondly, as most of you might be knowing by now that cases are practiced with a partner. So you will need a partner uh, basically who can identify identify your flaws, identify your strengths, give you logical hints and stop you when you are taking wrong directions. So a partner with whom you can freely open up and there should be no shame that maybe I'm going in the wrong direction and all. So that should not happen while selecting a partner. Thirdly, there is no structured way to solve a product case. It is purely your thinking as to how you are going to approach it. So in consult cases, there might be a skeleton that yeah, profitability cases can be cracked like this. At least I can reach up to this point using this flow. But in product, there is no such uh, flow of um, flow or blueprint to the answer. What you have to do is you don't have to memorize your past cases, but you have to improvise on the spot. That is, if you get stuck at a point, then you have to ask the, your interviewer for hints as to, yeah, I'm stuck. How can we go about this? Uh, uh, so that's how I'll uh, take you through a sample case as well for the better understanding as to what I'm trying to say here. Uh, next point would be the product profiles are generally not oriented on your academic uh, qualifications. So high CG and tier one company interns generally do not matter. Uh, this profile basically wants to check uh, how well will you be able to communicate with the client if your manager takes you to a call. That's it. That, this is the personality that you have. That is that is what you are going to present on the table. Some pointers on how you can do that is while you are sitting in an interview, numbers if you can play the number game with your interviewer that uh, leaves a quite a good imp impression because numbers stuck in the uh, stuck in your mind like if i say let's uh, say india's gdp increases by 5.6 percent you might not know what gdp is or the other terms but 5.6 will stick in your mind and you will keep replaying as to why 5.6 why not five why not six so this the next one is generalized for all profiles that you should know your CV line by line. If you mess up in any of those parts, you are uh, blowing yourself to smithereens there. Because if I ask you your name and you fumble there, that leaves a very bad impression. That is the exact image that you are displaying. While if the interviewer asks you that, run me through your CV and you fumble up there. That is the image that you are presenting to the interview. So you cannot mess up while dictating your CV. 
next one as i said that this profile contains a lot of attribute and attitude type of judgment questions so hr questions need to be practiced you might think that yeah uh, if the hr asks me what my strengths are i can improve and say it in a go but that's not an easy part what you are saying and how you are presenting is what you will be judged upon everyone can say that my uh, strength is time management but how is it time management what have you done that you can show that you can manage your time that is how you have to present next would be this tip is for the pre interview parts that is while the shortlisting processes are going on uh, in the tests generally there would be lots of aptitude question uh, mostly cat level so you should be at your tip top in your quant and mathematics and a few puzzles uh, like geometrical puzzles mathematical reasoning alphabet series uh, blood relations and all that so reasoning should be your uh, strong point the next one would be uh, explaining with examples if you can connect a concept with your personal life that leaves a very good mark on the interviewer that yeah you have at least been through this experience and you are able to replicate it in front of me right now so if such kind of situation arises in the future you will be able to at least handle it if not tackle it the next one uh, and the last point being is uh, as divyam said avoid using business jargons if you are not aware of if you start up with this beware that your interviewer has worked in that domain and has experience you he will ask you questions that will make you humble up there and if that happens you are again showing your weak side so you should not use any savvy terms that you are not confident of instead just you can say Uh, confidently that i know my basics very well but i'm not sure if i can take on this job so that also helps next slide please okay regarding the internships and projects so if you have uh, done some freelancing projects be it in the domain of finance be it in the domain of software but if you are targeting product profiles the output that you produce the contributions that you made can be uh, molded in those terms that might have a positive effect on your interviewer or the companies which are going through your profile let's say i deployed a certain model or i trained a neural network and got a certain output let's say i reduced the time of uh, the supply chain time by 3 minutes so instead of writing uh, let's say how you will write it for a software profile you will say that i trained a neural network i use this uh, use the software tools and this is my accuracy right now but for product profiles you will mention that earlier this was the time supply chain time and i reduced it by this much percent let's say 25% so that 25% is what will your interview question you on how have you reached to that number then as i said you don't have to know a lot of savvy terms in this uh, field because this is a relatively new and developing field so interviewers expect you that you come up with a clean slate rather than some half knowledge okay uh, before the shortlists arrive for a company there are generally mini assignments or decks that is provided by the firm uh if you are not sure what a deck is a deck is basically a problem statement that a company would give you and you would be required to make let's say four to five slides on it or a prd on it depending on what the firm wants and you have to submit the same you, there will be a certain deadline to do it okay i believe you will be able to find easily the deck submissions of flipkart apm so uh, how this is made this is again basically your thinking uh, how you are going to take on that situation what pointers you want to add what you think might uh, make your solution fail what are the pitfalls what are the risks and all and yes there would be a lot of submissions on it so the better you modify your deck your assignment the uh, more chances that you will be getting shortlisted so i'd suggest that you should if you have not uh, edged your ppt making skills this would be the right time to know how to beautify how, how to modify terms right and uh, while making up your cv definitely non core and pors should be put up on your profile because this type of profiles are 
basically client facing profiles so the more outspoken you are to your customer the more chances you have that your interviewer will like you yeah next slide please okay some few skills that you should have in your toolkit while approaching this profile is probability and statistics Statistics. statistics on the upper hand because statistics is a major part of your work might be a major part of your work when you enter this domain sql and database management again you will have to reap out a lot of data using sql and again you have to apply some number crunching to get certain outputs then the third point is not from your job perspective but from your beautification point of view that is if you have a hand around these tool figma and mockups then you would be able to better present your deck as comparison to other usually folks go for google slides or microsoft ppt but uh, that's not an issue but if you have certain thing that you know extra then why not present it in front of the interviewer and some basic terminology like uh, what is a kpi what is a pitfall what does bounce off mean what is a banner ad what is ui what is ux that you will be able to uh, accumulate over time while you are preparing with your friends if not uh, cdc or i'll share relevant uh, materials with cdc and they can forward it to you next slide please yeah keshav take on please yeah thank you Ajit. so i'm keshav parvi i graduated this year with a bachelor's in mechanical engineering and i'll talk about the core profile now uh, next Next. Okay, so the overall structure is similar to the other profiles as well uh, in general. But if you think, let's say, if you, uh, the awards and achievements that you have might not be that attractive, then you can shift them below. And uh, if you have something in the projects and internship section that uh, that you think is lucrative to uh, a particular person, then you can push that towards the topmost side, like below the education qualification. And POR again, P publications is like not the top one, but somewhere in the middle you can go for that. Coming to POR and coursework, uh, this is something coursework is in general applicable for core, as in department specific, and as well as FNCG roles. But POR is something that is usually uh, for that is usually focused upon by the FNCG recruiters, not much by the core ones. So if you have if you are targeting these uh, FNCG profiles, then you can. Prefer, I prefer PORs uh, at a higher position than uh, the other ones. But overall, this is up to you how you want to present your CV to the recruiter and what you think is the best way that portrays your image. Uh, next. So, coming to the general tips, as in general, it is like you are the one who is controlling the flow of the interview. Uh, so most of, more often than not, the interview is going to ask to run through your CV, talk about your projects, and then I'll interject in between. So you can align the projects in that particular order, which you think that, OK, this is something that I want to uh, talk about specifically because I've invested a lot of time in this, and there's a lot of impact. Or something that you're confident in, uh, in uh, let's say you're confident in project A more than you are in B. So A goes higher than B. So it, you, you can go in that particular direction. Uh, and it's pretty obvious that whatever projects or internships you are going to list, uh, try to be uh, try to have as much detail and as much clarity about what you did and what the project is all about, instead of having bits and bits of information. Because these things are usually very easy to identify if you fumble up due to any reason. And you and again you have the call you want to how how you want to present. So you can uh, you know the details. You can orient your answers in that way. Third thing is like. Uh, no one wants a very large and detailed answer. So whatever answer you are preparing about a particular project, let's say it's an introduction or what or your contribution. So try to be as simple so that even someone with a generic understanding of the overall system can understand what you have done. Because it's possible that the interviewer's domain of expertise is something else and uh, what, what you have done is the other. So in order for him or her to relate with what you did, it's easy to have a simplistic representation. Uh, if you if you can, if it's possible for you, then you can have a demo, photo, or model, whatever image of the model at least uh, in handy have handy let's say on your system. But again, it's not necessary. Uh, it depends. But if you can, it's good. 
And the next thing is if, if you can relate different projects. For example, let's say one of the project is in thermodynamics and the other is in fluids and there's some mismatch, then there's some alignment in, in, the, in those two particular domains, then you can connect that to show that, okay, this is, you have a particular understanding of both domains and this is how you can connect this particular, this, these two particular areas and produce the output. So if it's possible, again, it's not a compulsion. Now, coming to the coursework section and the this subsequent discussion in the interview, specify those subjects that you are comfortable with. For example, if you think you're not comfortable with, let's say, mechanics of solids or something related to your department, then do not mention it at least. Uh, then don't think of mentioning it because if you are unable to answer something in the, that particular domain, then it won't work out in your favor. So either don't list that particular subject or if you're going to list it then have a decent grip on that particular area or uh, as much info so that you can at least uh, answer some of the questions and then you can say that okay i'm not sure about this particular part so even that works out but not knowing something and uh, mentioning it on the cv not just in coursework but anywhere else is never going to work out in your thing and that's the next point whatever values or technical terms you are going to mention be absolutely sure about what's there. For example, if you talk about uh, increasing the efficiency from 30 to 50 percent, that's a significant number when it comes to mechanical systems. And if you're not able to justify uh, that that particular change, then, be, then that particular point or that particular project is questionable or whatever you did is questionable. So and that 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 will lead to you missing out on that on that particular opportunity. Similarly, if let's say you talk about turbocharger and you don't know what a turbocharger is or what, and you may not you know you may not be able to answer certain simple questions based on that, then again that's that's on you. So, if you are thinking of mentioning something, even a simple word, then be sure that you can somehow lead the conversation on that particular topic or word or whatever it is. Now, situation-based or behavioral questions generally apply to uh, FMCG roles, not much to the other core companies, but then it's better to be prepared. So in this case, prepare a concise and brief answer and try to relate as much as possible to your past experience as a part of your POR or let's say you went on an internship and you had this particular experience with the person there. So that creates a connect with the interviewer as Najiketa mentioned before and it helps in understanding what was the scenario that if you if you're talking about something fictitious then they, it might not be relatable and it's difficult to understand so these questions are best if you have a concise answer to the point approach and relating to something if, if it's applicable now uh, before you go to the interview before the interview is scheduled you can, you can try to spend some time knowing about the company's values and what all things they are looking into let's say uh, sustainable development energy optimization these are the uh, terms that almost all of the all, almost all of these companies are looking into you can go to their website and you can check these details out and the other thing is job description that's there on ERP or let's say if they have attached some sort of PDF go through that because Whenever you talk about something related to the, these these information, this is these particular points. It shows that you are genuinely interested in that role, either HR or technical. Whenever it's applicable, and it's going to uh, it's like a brownie point for you. Not everyone does that, and if you can somehow relate your experience to this particular contribution, or let's say if you have worked in energy optimization and you are able to relate that, okay, uh, this is something that this company that you you guys are looking forward to, and. Uh, I, I, I think this can be done. So again, this works out in your favor. So now, uh, whatever whatever responses you develop, as I said in the previous point, try to rel uh, relate that to the profile. For example, if it's in supply chain, then uh, if you have worked in optimizing some process, either a control system or some or a particular heat exchange or whatever it is, if that's relevant to the industry, then you can design your responses in such a way that the interviewer is able to relate that okay, the, whatever experience he has is relevant to this particular role, and this this is something that works for you. The last thing is guesstimates. Again, it's not necessary that uh, core interviews can and contain guesstimates, but then again, it's good to be prepared. And FMCG, there is a very high probability that you might end up having a question on this. So be prepared for that. There are uh, like numerous tools online available. Next. Now, coming to the internships and projects, again, as I said, whatever order it's on you, depending on let's say uh, whatever let's say if, if you have a particular project in which you have 
devoted a lot of time and the impact is very significant or you are able to describe the contributions in a very efficient manner or that particular project is relevant to the industry directly or indirectly then if it's a comp if, if you have worked in a very popular company or a, a high ranking university then you can prefer those projects high in the higher order compared to the other ones because usually your cv is going to be uh, like, like scrutinized in let's say less than a minute so it's better to have these terms or whatever you have done uh, uh, in the in the particular chronological order and while answering the questions and during the interview or whatever points you are going to mention under the projects there is a star format star stands for situation task action and result so try to adhere to this so that it's it's it, uh, whatever you write or whatever talk about is represented in a uh, crisp manner and at the same time you can the interviewer can relate okay this is what the situation and this is what he has done and this is the impact of this so it, so it, this is this is a better way to answer the question rather than rambling about on the particular subject area. Uh, as mentioned in the previous profiles, uh, quantifiable results are better if you are, let's say, if you say improving the efficiency. So if you quote a number, let's say 30 to 40 or 30 to 35, that's better rather than just talking about the improving the efficiency by changing this particular system. So this may or may not be as relatable and as understandable by the interviewer if you mention numbers the last thing is prefer those projects which are relevant to the industry rather than hardcore research for example if something that you have worked on in kgp or any other university uh, as a part of your interest or whatever you have looked into so let's say if it's a very hardcore research problem let's say the keystone problem or something specific to uh, microfluidics so these may not be applicable directly to the industry and it's very likely that the interviewer is not familiar with that so even if you mention that in, uh, in a higher order then it's possible that the interviewer won't even dive into it or if, 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 if he or she is talking about that then uh, it shows that it, because these are something that these are some of the details that they are not into because they have other projects to deal with. So align the projects in a particular order, keeping all these points in mind. Next. Okay, I think this is it from my side. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll take up the doc verification of documents uh, for now. Yeah, so uh, while you are um, filling your CVs on the RP module, uh, basically you will have an option to uh, upload each of the respective document that you are claiming to be, like for your internship certificate, your research certificates, your PORs, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what documents to be uploaded in case we don't have this, what can be the backup, backup documents? And if there is no backup, then what can be done? So I'll take you through it. For internship, uh, like we did in our time, uh, I guess the rules would be same that if you have the completion certificate, well and good. If not, you can send your offer letter. If not, you can send a mail from your manager that attesting that you have interned for this firm from this date to this date and he acknowledges that this can be certified as a valid proof. Right, 10th and 12th certificates are not needed. They are automatically in the data set. Academic achievements, uh, generally you will have certificates for most of them. If not, then uh, let's suppose it is a national level exam or a state level exam, then at the website you can get your scorecard downloaded at any time. You just need to enter your uh, UID or roll number uh, credentials and you can get the result sheet at any time. So that, that can be uh, uploaded as well. POR, yeah, the POR is a dicey section because there are different sets of PORs uh, in our campus. For Jimkhana PORs, a precedent attested mail or certificate should be uploaded. If not, you uh, need to consult with uh, the vice president to get the same at the earliest if you are willing to upload the same. For at hall level, the same can be routed through hall precedent and a warden attested certificate or an acknowledgement with the hall letterhead can be uploaded. For others, generally a mail is approved, a screenshot of the mail signed by the uh, head of that society slash cell would work. Uh, for example, 
e-cell if you are uploading a certificate for the position of responsibility uh, mail attested from your professor in charge will do right for projects uh, generally people uh, write down two types of projects one is a course project and one is a non course project so course projects are those projects that you take up while you are in the campus and you have done something let's say for your lab or uh, secondary courses etc so generally the professor in charge which you are working under can be uploaded if not you can just mention it as a course project generally that does not uh, pop up while the cvs are being verified so that is not a hard code section for rejecting a cv if proof is not valid for non course projects like you uh, did something on a freelancing website or you interned with a company but it was not a proper intern but let's say you were just a contributor or a part, part time contractor then those kind of um, acknowledgement acknowledgements need to be taken from the firm itself and yeah mail screenshots will work again right and the self projects self projects are basically self attested what are self projects that let's say uh, you visit a freelancing website and you try to take up a project a group project let's suppose eight people are working on it no one is in charge of anyone then how do you post it on your cv so you can tag it as a self project and mention what is the work done and generally no uh, certificate etc is needed for the self projects right e experience again uh, the as the vm explained that for consult cvs this is a very uh, important thing to be presented on your cv and mail screenshot again for head in your uh, in charge slash manager slash advisor who have whoever you have been in contact with knows that you have worked from x duration to x duration can be uploaded publication research papers are uh, you get a valid email for working if you have completed that in case you are still under process of the uh, publication slash research papers you can upload an attested mail stating that you have been taken up let's say by some professor and you are working under for this designated duration that is acceptable online courses and training again generates e certificates so no issues in that and rest all some miscellaneous projects are there uh, uh, especially especially the academic achievements and all in those sections what you can do is if you are unable to obtain the certificates which have been mentioned in this document cdc releases a self attested document that uh, if in the future company asks for a certificate for let's say something in your cv then you would be solely responsible if you are unable to produce the certificate cdc takes no blame for uh, such uh, instances so if you are confident that you cannot be challenged on a certain um, achievement that you are mentioning on your cv you can fill the self declaration form as well that is also acceptable yeah so that covers the verification part for your documents right so concluding this presentation uh, you all will get to know what the timelines are being planned when will be your day one what is the test schedule and everything beforehand so i would suggest that you try preparing bit by bit right from now because this is high time usually by the end of july you will get clarity as to what the timelines are and once uh, the institute opens you will be in a rush as to what to cover whether to save academics whether to save your career or whether to participate in activity extracurricular activity so it's be better if you secure your base right now secondly uh, for any thing that you think you are in trouble in the placement coordinators are available 24/7 you can message either one either of them if not if someone does not reply doesn't mean that you are being ignored you will get a reply that i'm sure of it will take time that also i'm sure of uh, next slide please okay so a few FAQs are in order. Uh, option to update CV in phase two internships. Yes, 
as soon as phase one closes everything you have an option to uh, update and start afresh for placements and for internships both can i write extracurricular achievements from school days or does it need to be no you can mention your school days achievement as well and yeah you are good to go generally generally people tend to mention something that they have done very recently because something that you are not the same person you used to be 10 years before right so you have certain capacity that you might not have now 10 years back right so generally people tend to write most recent achievements how do i give proof for certification because there is only one file uploading option and i have five certificates you keep on uploading them let's say you upload uploaded certificate one submit that come back go to the same option at the same place upload your certificate two repeat it three more times your five certificates are in the data set okay they might be jumbled but you have done your job now it is cdc's job to how to uh, verify those so you have uh, this is one second uh, there are multiple segments while you are filling your cv uh, let's uh, i cannot show you the portal right now but uh, there are uh, empty spaces or empty blank uh, upload links as well where you can upload your cv so that it is in the database for cdc to check at a future time so you need not worry you can keep on uploading then the rest of the job will be done by cdc where to write code forces competitions or in the awards and achievement section yeah you can mention them in your awards and achievement section no issues or extracurricular activities wherever you deem fit generally people tend to mention their cfa frm uh, code forces rank in awards and achievements how can i write the work that i am currently working on in an internship so uh, for this as i said that you can mention uh, let's say start date would be whatever you did started on then hyphen till date you are working on this the work you have done so far future work you can mention again if you mention you need to know how you are going to go about it because anything you write you are giving the interviewer a platform to question you on that if you are not sure what your future work is don't mention it just write the work you have done so far and in the bracket you are you can mention that i am still working here so that is not an issue next please right so i guess this is all from our end and uh, now team do we have questions from the uh, attendees someone is raising hand hey, you can drop it in the chat box no issues is mentioning department rank in awards and achievements a valuable point i guess no by the time you are at the point in your career that you are ready to build a cv you will have multiple achievements apart from your department rank but still no harm in mentioning it especially for core profiles if you mention your department rank that leaves a mark on the interview if you have a very good department rank like top 3 from 30 40 plus 50 plus students then you can mention that uh, 
class or do it yourself project then I'll first you classify as a course project right again as i said you tend to mention your most recent work first uh, answering your questions uh, sorry so your first year achievements might not be very relevant at that time but yes you can mention it as a course project CV. Yes, Rahul, you can mention the group project in your CV, but as I said, if you are not confident that you will be able to defend it, better not to. Or you can write that this was a group project, this was my part, and this is what I did, and this is the outcome that I obtained. And the questions can be around that but better if you have a better understanding of the project while mentioning it divyam lele bhai kuch questions tu bhi so i'm not having certificate of participation in inter hall open soft event but i have a mail from gsec tech which specifies that i was a member so that was so mails from gsec tech will not work i think you have already got your uh, you know document verification those here so any gymkhana activities only uh, the gymkhana president's uh, approvals will work so you need to get an email from them which should not be very tough to get three four lines empty in one page it's not desirable but if you are forced to do it then it's okay but try to cover your cv to the extent possible i would say you know the cdc internship is a once in a lifetime kind of opportunity and for a lot of students it does convert in a job so don't uh, you know don't take any risk full fill your cv to the maximum extent is it okay to mention lab work as a project for course affair well so if it was any some voluntary lab work that you did then it's okay but i think otherwise um you know it really depends if the company has something in common with the lab work that you did then you can mention it but i don't think that most companies would have anything you know have a lot of correlation with what is done in your first or second year labs but if if it's a like a senior year third year lab and the project was very good then yeah go ahead. is it necessary to add the timeline for each of our projects it's not necessary but it is desirable so by matlab it's you are not forced to do it by the like the technology of it but it's good to mention when you did what project so that the interviewer can set their expectations accordingly and also you know it will give them a sense ki what what all things were you doing simultaneously let's say you were handling a por then you published the research paper and you were doing an internship at the same time then you can communicate it with the help of it being an mcer student bj project was to mention in cv yeah yeah of course i mean your btech project would be something very significant so if it has anything in common with your uh, company and their work profile then go ahead and do it <clears throat> how to mention so in your uh, cv portal your course project would be or your any project so you enter into your cv portal you go down there will be some boxes where you can fill in information select the information that says projects and inside projects you can mention you know a, a heading which says self project you can add whatever information you want to add and in your proof you can just add a line which says that this is a self project along with you know whatever the link of the self project or kaggle link github link whatever any other questions that have not been answered importance of cg for software profiles so for some software profiles yes it is important mostly for your high frequency trading firms like graviton and tower research capital they will usually have a soft cgp cut off if you are really really good and you perform very very good in the test then it's a different thing but they will usually have a cgp cut off for most of the other firms cgp is not very important but yes firms like anything any firm that is operating in the finance uh, you know finance business like de shaw or high frequency trading firms will have a soft cgp cut off 
but any cgp above 9 should be okay to put you in the league right and then it depends on how you perform for d show 8 8.5 is good for trading firms 9 plus is good some trading firms like apt alpha grab you don't really need a very high cgp we have seen students get in with 7 also uh, aditya ranjan if you are adding to ha huh, you can add project to the project and internships part as well the process is same you have to select project and internships then you have to add whatever information you want to add in the central big box and then for proof you have to upload you have to say that this is a self project and upload the link to the self project we are having a course work section common for three series so how does that work if you want to set prior order of courses according to portal so yeah currently in the cv portal that is not possible cdc is working on it so you might have access to something like this in you know next editions of the internships or recruitments but as of now you can only upload one set of course yes aditya ranjan you the process is same whether you do it projects and internships separately or in the same heading if one is not from a software it background is it okay to prepare single cv for software analytics and finance uh i mean if you have a choice then prepare three cvs so if you are looking at three profiles then prepare three different cvs that's the most risk averse way of doing things but if you want to take a risk you can prepare the same cv for all three profiles also i mean there is no foundation on what you want to do but it's not recommended especially like soft analytics and finance for once you can think of having a similar cv but software and finance same cv will probably not work because for software you want to include your code chef code forces portfolio and things like that for and your course work and everything and for finance it's mostly not very helpful if any of the other panelists have any the ideas to share on these questions please go ahead please provide all timelines and guidance in any written document so i think this video is being recorded so you might have access to it later you can ask cdc for it the timelines i think they will be sent to you on your erp notice board so you can keep checking that uh devya uh yeah uh, so we can uh, stop the session here i think lot of uh, doubts are being covered in the session people can see the recording uh, to get the idea whatever they are asking uh thank you so much nachiketa keshav and devyam for helping the students out uh, it's really great to have you all here and uh, thank you audience for being so patient and hearing out uh, to everything